the oldest theaters. And why is he smiling? Well, his name is David Harriman, and he's the man responsible for putting together a financial package which should ensure many more years of grandeur and elegance for the Palace Theater. Well, I'm very pleased to be here today to announce basically three things, and that is that the Palace lives officially today. We have uh, made arrangements to acquire the Palace. It is ours at this point, and the banks and savings and loans in town have funded the revenue bond issue, and as you can see, we are already under construction. At that news conference, Harriman pointed out that the palace was perilously close to following in the footsteps of many of Cincinnati's grand old theaters. We're offers in on the palace as a parking lot, and I will have to give the city a great deal of credit. They made it known to uh, RKO Stanley Warner that they did not look kindly on a parking lot, that the zoning prohibited it, and uh, they would not like to see it happen. Don't it always seem to go That you don't know what you've got till it's gone You pay paradise, put up a parking lot I said, don't it always seem to go That you don't know what you've got till it's gone they pay paradise, put up a parking lot. They pay paradise, put up a parking lot. Well, I think it's very important to have uh, entertainment in the downtown area. If our only investment is in office buildings, then as soon as 5 o'clock comes, everybody goes home and our downtown will be empty. So the idea is to give people reasons to come on downtown. Uh, movies are one, but you know you can also see movies out in the shopping centers. But I think if we have places like the Palace Theater, and hopefully we can bring live theater back to downtown, that'll give people reason to come into our city, and uh, it'll be good for the lifestyle of the community as well as for the economy. The Palace Theater opened on December 6, 1919. The policy of the original theater management was one of continuous entertainment, starting at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Two complete shows alternated throughout the day, a complete vaudeville act, and a feature-length movie. It was definitely a cheaper, more gracious time to be entertained. For 20 cents, which included a two-cent war tax, a customer left his troubles outside and entered a world of plush red carpet, crystal chandeliers, and marble staircases. The palace was indeed a theater that lived up to its name. In 1919, it cost $500,000 to build, Nearly 70 years later, $2 million is being spent to restore it to its original grandeur. And David Harriman feels it's worth every penny. Well, it is one of the finest examples of legitimate theater houses built just after the turn of the century. And it was built for live theater. It has, for instance, fly space uh, for sets to be lifted up. It has wing space for sets to be moved to the side. Unlike, for instance, the Albi, which was built, designed as a theater palace with front of the curtain entertainment, vaudeville. This was built as a legitimate theater house so that we can have any of the Broadway musicals here uh, as well as the, the kind of live entertainment shows that we're going to be concentrating on. It is a beautiful house. It's 2,600 seats, which is the right size. It's slightly larger than the Taft locally. Um, it is extremely well built. The sight lines are superb. There is not, as I have said, a bad seat in the house. The way it is constructed, uh, it is relatively narrow, so there are no extreme side seats. And since the balcony begins very close to the stage, uh, you, have, you are close to the stage at any seat in the house. The theater marquee reads, The Palace Lives. Harriman says lately, The Palace Swarms may be more appropriate. Once inside the doors of this sedate old building on 6th Street, one is struck by a flurry of activity by workers readying the palace for its October 24th opening date. The first step was to undo the 1965 remodeling for Cinerama, which obliterated much of the French-style decoration. Scaffolding has gone up everywhere to enable plasterers and painters to reach the five-story high ceiling. A new lighting and sound system is going in backstage, there will be new carpeting and chandeliers. The box seats, removed in 1965, are being reconstructed. Bars will be installed, and the auditorium will be painted. 
all in the hopes of causing Cincinnati to fall in love with the palace the same way David Harriman did. Uh, you can fall in love with the theater, I found out. It's, uh, it's, it may be inanimate, but it has a certain kind of life of its own. And Cincinnati is such a remarkable city. Uh, traveled to other cities around, our sister cities, I won't name them, but um, the downtown in Cincinnati is just unique, uh, certainly in the Midwest. And with the construction that's going on, uh, there will be very good reason with the palace for people to come down to this very, very beautiful central city area.